Father, we want to thank you. We give you glory. And we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. You can take your seats. Psalms 11, verse number 3. That David, even if you're a good man, if your foundation has a problem, what can you do? David, even if you're a good man, if you don't deal with the issues which are hidden from behind you before you were born, after you were born, when you were a small person, when someone took your family for witchcraft, when you attacked, if you don't deal with it, you see in Christ, we are redeemed from the curse, every curse. So you stand on that truth to disable any other contradiction that the enemy wants to bring. You have the ground. You see, the word of God must be enforced in your life. Praise God. Amen. Truth does not manifest itself automatically. You activate it to manifest itself. The word of God is like that. You must activate it. You must make it work for you. Praise God. Amen. So we are looking at the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. You are in the kingdom of God. Church, I don't know what you are facing, what challenges you have. I don't know what you need from God. But there are keys that can release what you need. Keys are there. Keys are there. The kingdom has keys. Jesus saved it. You know the keys for opening, for locking and unlocking. There are things that the devil has locked from people. But Jesus has given us the key to open them. Sister Jane, you must succeed, succeed in business. You must. God must give you revelation. Praise God. All of us, we must move from revelation to revelation. Now, let's look at the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. Matthew 16, verse 15 to 19. The keys of the kingdom. But what about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse number 17. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of heads will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be born in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Praise God. This one is a big thing. It's a big subject. The keys of the kingdom. Now, Jesus was with his disciples. He asked them, what do people say I am? And they mentioned different things. Some said, oh, they say you're a prophet. They say you're so and so. They say you're Elijah. They were not very wrong. They knew it was along those people on the line of God like other prophets. They knew. But then, Jesus asked them, but what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? You know, this is a very powerful question. This morning, the Lord is asking, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? Who? Because that alone, that alone is a very big thing. It's a very big key. Who do you say I am? You know why some people don't see anything in the they don't see anything in the church they don't see any deliverance do you know why they don't see any miracle they don't see any change it depends on how they see Jesus if you see him like the muslims see him just like a prophet he's one of the prophets He's one of the prophets. <laughs> when you see Jesus like that, you will get very little from him. He's just one of the prophets. Look at that. 
Now he's asking, who do you say I am? That is a very powerful question. Because the moment you look at him as, you are my healer, there's no sickness that will kill you. I'm telling you. The moment you, is my healer. When you get that revelation, is my deliverer. And you look at that, there's nothing the Lord cannot deliver you from. You see? So it depends on who really, what revelation you have got about Jesus. You have to be very careful. Some people, Jesus has become, they are too used to Jesus. That Jesus has become ordinary to them. No, he can never be ordinary. Because each time you get a revelation, a fresh revelation about him, something happens in your life. Each time you come here to worship and you focus on worship, you begin to feel the atmosphere is different. The influence of the kingdom, you begin to feel it. And even when the devil is becoming uncomfortable, you begin to feel it. And even when he begins to retreat, you begin to feel it. You can even begin to feel your healing and deliverance. Church, we cannot gamble in salvation. We are sure of salvation. Be purposeful about salvation. Praise God. But what about you? He asked. What do you say I am? Simon Peter asked, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the Christ. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell, heads, will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be born in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Praise God. She just look this big thing that Jesus did for his people, did for you. Because you are a disciple now. You replaced those people. Who is a disciple? A disciple is a willing and a practicing learner. Someone who learns from his master and practices what the master has taught him. We learn from Jesus and we do what Jesus has taught us. We do it. The victory and the blessing is in the doing. It's in the doing. That's why we emphasize that whatever you learn from the church, do it out there. You will see the blessing. If you don't do it, you won't see the blessing. It, you, you go to the arena of gambling. When you take the devil in the ring of gambling, you will never beat him. You will never beat him. Sister Rita, you take the devil in a place to fight him in the ring of gambling, marked gambling. Mm -mm. When you take him in the arena of truth, you will win him. You will beat him. When you take him in the arena of gambling, because the people who don't know gamble, they try. Let me try this. Let me try this. Let me. No, we don't try. We leave out. We leave out the word. You are not here to try. Tell your neighbor you are not here to try. Turn to another li uh, uh, neighbor. You are here to leave out the word. I'm telling you. We are not here to try. You just look. Who, who do you say I am? And God is asking each one of you. Who do you say? And, and imagine, he, he asked Simon. Simon Peter answered among the group of people he was asking, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the Christ. You are the anointed one. The word Christ means anointed one. You are the Christ. Mark 8 verse 27. Let's look at it. The same passage is reported in Mark. Jesus and his disciples went out to the villages around 
Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? Go to the next, 28. They replied, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. Still others, one of the prophets, continue. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ. Now, in other translation, uh, is, is, put it on KJV and we see. Is that KJV? That is NIV. Put KJV and we see. No, just that uh, thou art the Christ. That is KJV. And the translation said, you are the Messiah. You are the Messiah. New Living Translation. Put New Living. You are the Messiah. In other words, a Messiah is a Savior. You are the coming Savior. You are the Savior we have been expecting. You are the Savior. You see, the word Savior, to save, God has come to save you, not only from your sins. It's a big word. It contains everything. The word save means to rescue. He came to rescue you from the power of sin. He came to rescue you from the penalty of sin. He came to rescue you from the hand of the wicked one. Whom your ancestors were serving without knowing that he is wicked. Even if they knew they were powerless, they didn't know how to get out of his hand. You see, many people don't know how to get out of the hand of Satan. Yeah, because he's full of deception. He works by deceiving. So for you to defeat him, you only need to have the truth. If you don't have the truth, he will keep you going around the cycle. Praise God. Peter received a revelation. May you receive a revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. May you clearly begin to see your way forward in Jesus' name. Amen. You are the Savior. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's how Peter, Christ, the anointed one, anointed to come and save. Justine, that is a crucial thing. You can blame whoever you want to blame for your problem, let me tell you. You can blame. And I, what I'm telling Justine, I'm telling to you. You can blame whoever you want to blame. You can even be blaming your grandfather who died for not helping you go to school when he had some money, when your father could not. You can blame whoever you want to blame. But I want to tell you, that one won't help. But if you can get a revelation about who Jesus is, then your problem is sorted out. And when you have set your foot on that path, don't turn away. Joshua was told that don't turn to the left or to the right. Sometimes people get saved and then they wait, but nothing is changing. Oh, nothing is changing. But they don't understand that God is dealing with the old foundation and laying for them a new foundation. They don't understand that certain blessing requires knowledge. You need the key. Knowledge. If you don't have the knowledge, the devil will descend on you and destroy you quickly. Some years back, uh, a certain lady living here in Kampala brought the brother to me. Brought the brother. After that man had graduated from Makere University, he went and sat in the village and he was busy drinking. He drank and was wasting away completely. I told him that, you see, you, you need Christ. You need to have him in your life. It's the only way you can counter the other force that had reduced you to the village. And the man was, got, because after that he got a very nice job in one of the, the towns in eastern Uganda. And he began to work. And quickly, the man did not take long. He just died. 
the man just died off. And the lady came to me and said, now, if he was in the village, he would, being a drunkard, he would still be alive. But because he crossed a line and started to do something useful to himself and to others, the forces that has made him sit in the village in the drinking group without any decent clothes and shoe, and they terminated him. He said, this is too much. You see, and that's why God takes time to bless some people. And that's why it is very, very important for you to say, God, show me what I should deal with. Because if you don't mature, you don't prepare yourself for the blessing, you remain in the wilderness for long. That's why the Israelites remain in the wilderness for long. Because inheritance is only given to mature people. You can't give a five-year-old uh, uh, boy when, because the father has now died the estate. What will the boy do with it? Even a 10-year-old boy. You say, now these five houses, your father left it. Have it. Or a teenager. Or a young man who has just entered his early 20s. You give him a lot of money. You know what will happen. They will wreck themselves. They will buy sport cars. They will drive like they will not die. <laughs> Have you seen the motorcycle men, the border border men, the young men? So, 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 so I, sometimes I look and say, oh my God, have mercy on them. You see, you see the, the person is just throwing away their lives like they will never die. They are being deceived by the demons, the devil. They don't have the knowledge. They don't look at, they don't realize that that life is for a season here and should be protected, should be guarded. You are the Christ. Peter got it. You are the Savior. You are the Messiah. Peter got it. Have you got it? Because that's a very important key. He told Peter, he said, look, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed it to you. It is not, you have not just got it from your own mind. My father, he never revealed it to you. That's why every day you must pray for revelation and wisdom. Wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation. Let the Father reveal to you something about your business. Father, I have been in this kiosk for 10 years. Is there something new I can do to shift to the next level? I am assuring you, you cannot ask that for one month without having a clear revelation. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. I've been in this job for this long. Lord, what can I do to improve myself? How can I begin to handle money that I receive, Lord, to my profit? God will begin to show you. Of course, the first thing, the most important thing is you have to work out your budget and make in the budget you make sure you save something you, you make sure you save you first save then you budget you know that your first tithe 10 percent is my tithe then saving then investment that's what the jews do number one is tithe you know they're the ones they're the richest group of people in in the world the jews so because of that covenant revelation so what they do Number one, tithe. Number two, savings. Number three, investment. Number four, spending. Now, number five, helping people. They also, budget, they also put it, the ones for helping people. So they divide their income into five what? Five parts. So what they do, they make sure that they invest, they make sure they save. The investment takes care of the future. And the tithe opens the heaven and causes the blessing to flow. Praise God. And in fact with them, 
They even put 10% for helping people. They put 10%. 10% to God, then they put another 10% for helping people. Then they divide the other remaining one. Praise God. Wisdom. When you pray, I say, God, grant me wisdom and revelation. Ephesians 1.17 Pray that prayer every day. Ephesians 1, 17 to 19. You pray for wisdom and revelation that will give you, make you know God better, make you know what he has called you to do, what business he has called you to do, what job he has called you, what ministry he has called you to do in the church. Then wisdom and revelation to reveal to you the resources he has stored for you which you can access. You need to, to ask him to reveal how you can access it and the power. You need power. There are things you will never do without the power of God. Wisdom and revelation to show, for God to show you how you can tap into his power to change things. Praise God. You must be sensitive to, to discover what is the covering in this area. Whether you go to West Nile, you go to Arua, you must be sensitive enough spiritually to discover what covering is over this area. Uh, there is a, a certain doctor of ours who went, he said he went to Sweden. So, he said, he said when he was there in that city, he, he felt the, it, the place was so terrible. He felt evil everywhere. He said, oh, pastor, you can feel the evil in the air. That's what the man told me. People are so wicked, so evil. I mean, the rule, the power. He was sensing the power over the place. He said, he was moving in the street. As he turned like this, he found a glass house. You know how they, they display uh, goods in the glass window in our town, in, in city here. They put clothes in the window. He found naked women standing there in the window. Prostitutes. They are there. And people are passing. You come and you say, no, I want this one. Then you disappear there. <laughs> you, just, <laughs> you just look. The man said, you feel wickedness thick in the air. He was feeling the covering. Homosexuals, what all kind of mess. And then I was talking to one government minister here. We were discussing uh, some years back. And the man told me, he was also, actually he was from Sweden also. He had gone for a certain meeting there. He said, uh, 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 that, <laughs> you know that, you know, with us we are African. Our culture is different. Even their culture is different. It's just wickedness they are allowed to, to overtake them. He said they were in a lift. And they were coming down. And there were men in that lift, about three men. And he got a certain Muzungu man there. The Muzungu man tried to kiss him. He said, I will box you and kill you now. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. And he said, when he was coming now, he found an hotel where these fellows take big cuts. You know, an hotel for cats. When they are going on safari, a woman goes and delivers her cats there. Take care of my cat. There's a bed, they give the cat good treatment. You pay the hotel bill for cats. So you see, everywhere you go, you find a covering. But you must bring that covering down. You must break the power of that covering so that even if there's wickedness everywhere, wherever you go, the heaven is open over your life. And you are carrying power. Wherever you go, their evil does not affect you. Instead, you affect the evil and release the people. Amen. You need wisdom and revelation. Even when you have the knowledge, just, just look at this. God told Peter, that look, Peter, my father has given you that revelation. And I tell you, Peter, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. On the revelation, on what God has revealed to you, 
when you are operating on revelation, the devil cannot win you. Cannot overcome you. Cannot. When you allow the word of God to be revealed to you. These other fellows knew, oh, you are the prophet, you are Elijah, you are so and so. They were just near the truth. Yes, he was a prophet. It is true. But that was a not enough. It needed revelation. What did it really come? What does it mean to you? What does Christ mean to you? What Christ means to you can cut off anything. Even if someone comes and abuses you, Mary. What Christ means to you cannot make you even take one word. Because you see, that's how people open doors. Even if someone comes and, and steals something, but you are tired that no one can rob you. Even if someone came and provoked you, you will not fall in the trap. Why? Because you know what Christ means to you. Who am I to you? Who do you say I am? You see, it's so important. Very important. When you realize that Christ is your provider, is the one that rules over the universe, and the earth and its fullness, and everything it belongs to him, you say, Lord, reveal to me how I can get money. Because you have given me work to do. I'm not here on earth for nothing. I have something to do here. And I need money. Don't even say resources. Some people play around. Oh, they are not clear to God. Say money. Even the people of the world are serious. There is that song that I need some money. <laughs> we are trillionaires for Christ. We are trillionaires for Christ. Say, I have a trillionaires mindset. I'm telling you because you have a father who owns everything. Why do you want to say you're a pauper? You see, when you realize that Jesus is your provider, you are not going to get stuck in any way. Praise God. You are not going to get stuck. Be clear. Tell God what you want exactly and let him give re you revelation on how to proceed. How to proceed. Don't try things that are not of God. Quick. Con men are, pr will promise you a lot of things. In this area of social media, it is so terrible. So many people have tried to con me. Other people you cannot even tell them. One time, and they don't listen. One time there's a lady who came to me and said, Now, Pastor, there is a, a relative, a son of a former president in Nigeria there. You see, they had banked their money somewhere in Europe. Now I wanted to go and get that money. He promised that woman that I will send you this amount of dollars. So, the lady came to me and said, Pastor, you know, imagine if I get this money, how much tithe I will bring. Eh? So now, I have this money here. I want to try to get it because they want some money eh? Eh? so that they can work out how to get the other money. So I want, I want to give them this, send it to wire. I said, don't. Don't, that's a lie. Don't. We are not also hungry for that kind of tithe. Don't. <laughs> I gave, I remember I gave, I said, you ask the person A, B, C, D. Fast, ask, and you will see. And she asked those questions and the person vanished. I said, the man was gone. Another accountant, who was in our church here, someone came to him and said, you know, Mr. Accountant, there is this maturity. We are going to get this amount of money out of this maturity. It is here. We need to get it. It is in ginger. Get for us this amount of money. I don't remember. But it was a lot of money at that time, many years ago. He said, oh, just get for us some money, company money. And it was weekend. So that by Monday, the money will be back. So the company will not know. The man came to me and said, Pastor, look at the kind of man I can get, we can get. 
So, should I give the money? I said, don't give the money. You'll go to prison and your, your children will suffer and your wife will suffer. And actually, the man later came and told me, said, Pastor, you really saved me. They were con men. They were con men. Another person again came to me, was working in the, in the prime minister's office, handling big projects. People were looting money there. And he told me, he said, my boss wants me to sign this check. My boss wants me to sign this check, pastor. Is it okay? I said, don't sign it. Don't. Even if they want to mess you up in the job, don't worry, God will protect you. The man refused to sign it. After some one year or so, everything blew in the newspaper. They arrested this big man. They arrested this one. They arrested this man. Then his boss came to him and said, thank you so much for not signing the other check I wanted to sign. <laughs> We would, be, we would be among this group now. <laughs> you see, just get rich quick. Schemes, avoid it. Let God give you revelation. It may appear like it is slow, but at the end of the day, you have no debt. <laughs> you see? You have no one stopping you from sleeping. So when you get revelation, it's a powerful key Verse number 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be born in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. Praise God. Amen. What God makes us know. Let me tell you church. This key is nothing but revelation. John 8, 30 to 32. Let's quickly look at this and we close. John chapter 8, verse 30 to 32. As he spake this word, many believed on him. Then Jesus said to, to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciple, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know, you shall have knowledge of the truth, you shall have knowledge. The key. Jesus is talking about here is knowledge. Knowledge. God has facts. God has information that you can apply wisdom to to enable you breakthrough. To enable you open any closed door. The demon of poverty can close the door to resources before you. You cannot kick it. You cannot blast it with bombs because it is spiritual. You cannot weld it out and open it. No. It needs revelation. It needs revelation. You cannot shoot that lock. You need to know what God says about that situation. You need to know, to have knowledge and to use wisdom to handle that situation. The door will open for you. The door will open. Knowledge opens the door. When wisdom is used, applied to it. That's why Jesus insisted. He told these people, if you listen to my teaching, you will know the truth. If you listen to my teaching, you will know the truth. You will know. You will have knowledge. You will have knowledge. And that knowledge will make you free. If you continue in it, if you continue in it, it's not knowing only. Knowing is not enough. That's why many people go to school. In fact, I thank God that they're changing the curriculum, which is good. Because children used to cram and cram and cram for passing exam. It is not useful. But now there's reasoning, but now there's application, the emphasis is changing. But now they're looking at the general idea, the thematic. Praise God. You see? It's now according to themes. You now more understanding is required. So the children can be effect, uh, uh, equipped for life. Praise God. Lift up your hand and talk to the Lord. To grant you wisdom and revelation. So that you may know 
wisdom and revelation.